Oh, oh man, you don't turtle like those time. There, do you? Uh oh. Now here's the bad thing. He may not have turtley mode as well. We oh, go. he dies. Nice. All right, you got some time to make up. All right, out the other side. Oh. Oh. All right, here's where right. turtle mode comes in. Let's see what happens. All oh, right, turtle nice. mode came through. Hi, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Ian. What's up, guys? I'm Matt. And today we're going to show you how to add turtle mode to your already existing gremlin. That's exactly right, man. This is Alex's gremlin. He was so gracious to let us use it for this episode, and we're going to show you how to put it on. So that way when you flip upside down, you can flip back right and keep going. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to show you the tools list needed to complete the job. Solder and a soldering iron. Wire snips. Wire to extend your ESC signal. And a battery a laptop, and a USB cable. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I crash a lot and I definitely have to get back upright and get going. And I'm kind of lazy where I don't want to go back out and get it. Mm -hmm. So this should be good to fix that, right? Well, let's just say you're never going to have to retrieve your quad again. Nice, nice. That's my kind of thinking. I got you. Yeah, all right, good, good. <laughs> let's get to it. Yeah, let's get into the fun stuff, the stuff we do all day long. We uh, build quads, repair them for you guys out there. So Ian's going to show you how to do this small. It's not a repair, it's an upgrade to your quad. That way you can uh, get turtle on your own. Mm -hmm. And this is something that anybody um, at home can do. Um, the soldering uh, it can be a little bit small, but um, I recommend just doing a little bit of practice. You know, it, Get some um, bare wires or some, some bare boards that you can just practice tinning with. and. Um, Practice makes perfect, so that's and obviously going to be helpful. Another thing, if you guys got a magnifying glass or even like a work light, something like that, to lighten up your workstation or uh, zoom in on your the thing you're soldering on, that's going to be a good uh, good idea because the pads are kind of small. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get started here and uh, what, take the top plate off? Yep. First step will be to start disassembling our gremlin. Okay, cool. And these screws are pretty small. If you guys notice, you might need a smaller screwdriver or even sometimes I think Ian likes to use a flathead. I do as well. Mm -hmm. So depending on how you've built your Gremlin, you may or may not have some electrical tape wrapped around your ESCs. On this one we do, so we're gonna cut that off before we go ahead and cut off our heat shrink. I like to just score along the edge line, right along the arm. That should allow us to peel away the electrical tape. Next, we're gonna remove the heat shrink. What I like to do is just score along the edge line of the ESC, and then I hit it with some heat, and it'll expand the hole, allow us to tear it open. Next step is going to be desoldering your ESC from your flight controller. I usually go ahead and do the power and ground wires first. And next we're going to prep our wire that we're going to extend over here to our PPM pad on our flight controller, which is right next to our 5 volt for our camera. So I'm just kind of eyeing up the length I'm going to need. We're going to trim it. And then we're going to have to tin each end. Now that our wire is ready, we're going to go ahead and remove the old wire. Keep in mind, depending on how long you've left your ESC signal wires, you may not have to extend this. You may just be able to solder it over to the PPM pad. In our case, we do have to do an extension because we trimmed them short the first time. 
What I like to do is have the pads on the ESC nicely pre-tinned with some fresh solder. If they don't look shiny, you can always shine them up by just putting a little bit of solder onto your tip while simultaneously putting it on the pad and then pulling away. That'll leave enough solder on there for you to solder onto and it'll remove any old solder. Next step I'm gonna do is tin our PPM pad. I like to bend the wire in ways that'll make it easier for me to solder it onto the board. Next step, we're going to put on our new piece of heat shrink. And be sure to get both sides. The next step will be soldering the powering ground wires for the ESC back onto the flight controller. With this, it helps to have a clean soldering tip. I like to prep it with a little bit of solder, get my wire in position, Next process will be to solder our wire onto our PPM pad. I like to use a pair of tweezers to hold the wire in this instance. All right. Now we're just going to rewrap our ESC with some electrical tape. Put the top plate back on and we'll be good to go. Now the next part we're going to do is beta flight. Um, little side note on beta flight though before we get that part started is we're going to be using the Chrome app um, but that's not going to be available for you can't even download it anymore I don't think. Mm -hmm. Google is going to be stopping their Chrome app web store uh, so what beta flight went ahead and did was they uh, developed their own standalone configurator at 10.0. Uh, we'll put a link in the description below that way you guys can find it if you do want to go ahead and do turtle mode. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the uh, BL Heli configurator as well. Um, today we're going to be using the BL Heli configurator um, app that you can get from the web store. Um, but like we said, if you don't actually already have that uh, downloaded on your computer, um, you will be able. We will put a link in the description below for you to be able to go online and find the standalone BL Heli suite that will work just the same for you. Correct. All right, let's plug that little guy in and uh, get her going on the the laptop here. All righty. Now the first thing uh, you're going to do is go into CLI and uh, change the motor 4, the resource motor 4. Correct. Okay. So we're going to go into CLI and then uh, there's a couple different ways you can get it. Uh, Ian's going to type resource, enter, and that's going to bring up all the things you, uh, you can resource. So you're going to see motor 1, motor 2, 3, so on and so forth. So what all he's going to do is copy uh, motor 4, resource motor 4, copy that. Uh, he's going to paste it in the command bar and then he's going to actually take out the A003 I think it is right mm -hmm. now and you're going to replace that with the A15 which it just means you're going to redirect the information to a different pad. And what that's doing is redirecting it to the PPM pad which we soldered to which is going to be able to output our digital signal for our DSHOT commands. Okay and then what's it saying right there? It's just telling us that we have a couple notes um, it's saying that uh, A15's already been set to some PPM and serial RX and an ESC serial signal, which is quite all right. It's just giving us some information of other things that it's been resourced to. Um, it's not going to hinder the performance or affect how it flies at all. Yeah. Continue on. Uh, but since we're not using PPM, uh, any of that, we're going to go ahead and just use that pad for the digital signal for D-Shot. Correct. And then you're going to save. Always save. Always save. And then it's going to reboot for you. 
A couple other options while Ian's rebooting, you can also put in dump in the CLI. That's going to give you all your options, more than just resourcing options. Um, and then if you scroll through there, you'll also find this. Or you could just type in resource motor, motor 4 equals A15. And then you can hit enter and save also. Um, but the easiest way we like to do is just type in resource, copy it. That way everything's uh, correct on that. Mm -hmm. And one more CLI command that we're going to have to do, if you like to use your accelerometer uh, for running angle mode or horizon mode, things like that, um, we're going to have to set your small angle, which is an arming limitation angle. So basically we're going to have to change the window from about 5 to 10 degrees to 180 degrees to allow us to be able to arm while we're upside down. So once again, that's it. we'll go into the CLI. And that's only if you do still use Correct. level mode. If you're, uh, if you're a little bit more advanced or you've been flying for a while and you only fly in acro. And you disabled your and accelerometer. And you disabled your accelerometer, which a lot of us do. Um, as long as the accelerometer is off, you don't have to do that. But most people do have auto level still. So we're going to set the small angle to 180 mm -hmm. uh, in this case. And then uh, that command is going to be as follows. We're going to type in set space small underscore angle space equals space 180. And you can also find that in the dump too, if you scroll through there. Correct. Once again, making sure that we always type save and enter. Now we can go ahead and go into our configuration here and adjust our ESC motor protocol to DSHOT 600. Also remembering to save and reboot. And DSHOT's just the digital uh, signal, the, the firmware and digital Correct. firmware. Protocol. We would also like to go into our receiver tab and we're going to double check to make sure that all of our channels are corresponding with our remote properly. Forward is forward, back is back, right is right, and left is left. Then we can go ahead and start assigning our switches to the auxiliary channels that we're going to need. For our gremlin today, we're going to be assigning our turtle mode switch on switch A back here. And we're going to put that in the up position, because up is up. Nice. I like that nice little trick. So we're going to have to set up the mode switch for our turtle mode. We're going to go into the modes tab, scroll down, until we see a tab that says flip over after crash. Now if we, don't, mode. Now if we don't see that in the mode, is there something wrong? Or yes. What is, what if, is, if you haven't gone into configuration and changed your ESC protocol from one shot or multi shot to D shot, it will not display flip over after crash option. You have to be ha you have to have D shot enabled for it to appear. Gotcha. So we add the range, go in here to auxiliary one, and when I flip auxiliary one, I see a ye little yellow bar that corresponds. What I'd like to do is flip it in the on position, Let's take our slider here, and move it into the window of our range. I like to trim it down a little bit and leave a little bit of extra space on either side. So that way if there's any trimming or any um, movement or play in the uh, signal that the switch is sending, it'll still be within the range. Cool. Also save. remembering to save. Always, mm -hmm. always save. And then it turned to yellow, so that just means it's working now? Correct. Okay. Um, when you see anything yellow in the modes tabs, that is usually a sign that it is currently active. So if we disarm our turtle mode, we'll be able to come back and see that it is not great. Not anymore. active anymore, okay. And as we flip the switch, it turns on and cool. off. So we know it works before even going out to the field or anything. Correct. Nice. So now, we can go ahead and update our ESCs. Now we're going to go into BL Heli, the app store. Correct. It's, since we still have it, we're going to use it. It's unfortunate they're getting rid of that. It was an easy way to do it. Um, but BL Heli Suite is also, like, like Ian said earlier, link in the description. You'll be able to download that. It's a little older of a standalone program, but it Correct. still works great. You can still yes. flash stuff. Um, so we're going to actually go into that so we can update our ESCs now. Um, this is the part where you want to make sure your propellers are off. Uh, whenever plugging in the quad into uh, a computer, I always take mine off, but whenever you plug a quad in with your battery, mm -hmm. that's when the motors can spin up. So you always want to make sure that they're off. 
Um, just it's good to just take them off anytime you plug into your, your computer because mm -hmm. you never know a computer could take over your aircraft and it can go <laughs> haywire. Um, so Ian's gonna do that now. He's plugging in the battery. Uh, he's gonna hit connect on BL Heli. And we are connected via USB to our laptop. And we're gonna go ahead and want to read, read the setup. setup. Now you should have four ESCs um, should pop up. If you don't have four, there's going to be a process you either missed, a step uh, you overlooked, or uh, there could be a problem with your ESC itself. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you have four that show up in BL Heli. Correct. You want to make sure that um, you follow the processes and in the order that we're doing them Correct. as well. Yep. So now we'll go around here to flash all. Now there's two tabs, two drop down bars. One is the ESC. And that's just telling us the type of ESC that it is sensed. The BL Heli configurator, along with the BL Heli suite, are auto sensing, so you don't have to choose the version when you read the setup. If you change the version, it may alter the performance of the ESC or possibly brick the ESC, yeah, the causing future damage. The first one, yeah, I, I never touch it. it mm -hmm. Usually it, it does a good job sensing it on its own. Right. So just leave it alone. You don't want to mess with that at all or damage your components or Correct. anything like that. Now what we will go into is version here, which we need to select the version that we would like to be on. And to get the turtle mode to work, we will need to be on 16.67 or newer. So we will choose the 16.7 because it is the official release and it is stable. I always like the latest and greatest. Anyway, Correct. So. I agree. We'll go ahead and flash. And the cool thing about this is it will go ahead and flash each ESC individually. Yeah, and you can actually give us little um, updates in the top corner and let us know how it progress. Yeah, it's cool. So every time it switches from first ESC to second ESC, you'll actually be able to see the progress, and uh, it'll tell you at the top mm -hmm. ESC one done flashing, moving to ESC two, Correct. and so on. And then once it gets to the fourth one, it'll say finished or mm -hmm. completed. Right. And um, while we're letting that go ahead, I'm going to go here to the common parameters for our ESCs. And just one little pro tip that something that me and Matt like to do is go in here into our beacon delay and change that from 10 minutes down to 5. What seems to happen is when you lose your quad, something small like this, especially out in the field, and you want to take off your goggles and go ahead and go look for it, a lot of times it seems about 5 to 6 minutes that we start to give up if we haven't found our quad. So it's very rarely that we're actually out there for a full 10 minutes waiting. So if we can shorten that amount of time that our quad takes to start to chirp to us, we'll be able to hear it and find it easier. Yep. Now that our ESC flashing has been completed and it says finished in green, we can tell that it was a successful flash. Um, now that we've adjusted our beacon delay parameters from 10 minutes to 5, we're going to go down here to write setup. Writing our setup is basically like saving our setup. Cool. Always save. Correct. We'll go ahead and disconnect. Here are confirmation tones from our ESCs. Go and then go ahead and unplug our battery. Nice. Unplug from our computer. And now we can test it out. Now we can do some real world testing. Correct. Very cool. Yep. Before we uh, put the props on, we're going to want to do some testing with the prop. With yeah, the motor's I, off. I or with the props Yeah, off. I was going to say, I usually, after I do any repairs or anything like that, I like to leave my craft on the workbench, actually, with the props off and everything. Mm -hmm. Check spinning of the uh, motor direction. Correct. Check, make sure turtle mode's working. Exactly. Stuff like that. You really don't need the props to make sure that all those functions are working. Right. And it's to test to make sure those things are working, it's a lot safer to keep the Correct. props off. Correct, yes, very Because if something, if the motor's spinning the wrong direction, a lot of times, I like to call it breakdancing quads, but it'll a lot of times out. the quads will just freak out and it'll look like it's breakdancing on the ground. And that can be really dangerous, especially if you're, you know, right there on your, your workbench. Or if you know a lot of people do a lot of the work inside in their basements or stuff like that. So um, it just helps to always test everything, you know, with the props off. If we've done everything correctly up until this point, it should be ready to fly and be active for turtle mode right now. All four motors should spin up. Fingers crossed, no pressure. So first we're gonna go ahead and arm. They're a little noisy, but that's quite all right. These motors are more than durable. I think Alex has been flying this one since he came out with this. Yeah, this is, so this is the been, first one I built him. He's so. been bashing around. That's another thing I like about the Gremlins is you can really bash them around yeah. and me and you race them and yes. beat them up pretty hard. We are arming works. I'm going to confirm that our motors are spinning the right direction. 
And what are. were you doing right there? You just like I'm to just feeling feel the on. motor direction. I like to apply a little bit of pressure as I go and grab on the motor. It tends to torque my fingers in a certain direction that the no, motor's spinning. I'm not going to damage that if I do that. No. At home. Okay. Cool. The ESCs have um, uh, active limit current uh, protecting on them, so with they're bound up, they'll actually resist. It won't okay. force the turn. It'll just kick into the next step. Cool. Nice little check step there. All right. Now our turtle mode, we have on this switch in the up position. So to activate turtle mode, you want to be disarmed, activate your turtle mode, rearm, and now if everything is done correctly, some of these motors should start to spool up as I move this stick around. Now what that's doing is when Ian is actually moving the roll stick or pitch stick, um, when you go right, it's going to reverse the two on your right side, and so when you're upside down, it's going to actually reverse the thrust and push that side back over for Correct. you, and vice versa for forward, backwards, left, right, and <laughs> that's basically how you flip back over. Exactly. And then once you're done, you just flip turtle mode off? Well, you or would actually uh, disarm, uh, disengage turtle mode, and then go ahead and rearm. Now, if I'm in a mid-flight or in a race and I, I forget to disarm first. It, mm -hmm. It's not going to just rearm uh, by itself. I think you have to flip the, the turtle mode switch before it rearms. Correct. So if you do have the turtle mode activated, um, it's not going to rearm regular until you flip that. Correct. Okay. As I'll demonstrate now, we currently have the turtle mode switch active, and now I'm arming, and as you can see, no motors are spinning. Simply, all you'd have to do is disengage your turtle mode switch, rearm, and it's back and ready to fly. Now, some tips when using turtle mode. You always want to start slow. I tend to like to ramp it up in a very linear fashion. I start very slow, and then I kind of just pop it at the end. That'll kind of get your gremlin kind of just getting off, and then it can just go off. If you go too aggressively, sometimes it doesn't recognize, and then also it can be too violent which would cause multiple rotations and then it could actually just leave you still upside down. Now another thing to keep in mind when you are using turtle if you are flipped upside down and you're wedged against a wall or there's like a pillow or something you're flying inside your house and those motors aren't spinning you're not flipping back over don't continue to try to use turtle. Um, you, you can, can you can burn up your motors uh, but you just want to make sure if you're stuck or anything like that, uh, just be cautious with that. Uh, if, but if you're not stuck, it, it works great almost every time I flip yes. back over and keep going. Yeah. So you don't want to try to force it. Exactly. Oh. And another uh, quick tip um, that I have personally noticed, uh, the way that they have the turtle mode settings set up in Betaflight, um, I tend to notice that whatever side is free is the side you want to push your right stick towards. So, for instance, if you were in this position and your nose was in the ground, you know your back motors are out. You would simply pull back and that would cause you to rewrite yourself and then go ahead and continue on. Nice. So I think uh, that's pretty much everything. I think we can get some props on this and show you guys how this actually works in real life. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's I'm go. excited. All right. Let me uh, give her a try. Let me give this a whirl. So we got props are on. Props good. are on. Controllers are on. Controllers good to go. Plug her in. I'm not touching any switches. All right. Everything's good to go. Remember, go slow. Oh yeah. Got to remember that. It's a little bit harder line of sight. In the goggles, if you're flying an FPV, you, you're going to be able to tell if your left's up, your right's up. So I'm going to give this a whirl, though. We're going to do our turtle mode switch. We're going to arm. And it looks like the left side's a little bit higher to me, if I'm correct, right? Yep, okay. I agree. Now we're going to, let's go slow. See, there's the slow. I'm going to, there it go. First time, man. That little blip and at then the end we just pushes her over. Disarm. And right there, like I was talking about, mm -hmm. I had it armed, but it didn't arm. Correct. So I disarm turtle, I rearm, and now we can move around just like normal. Nice, man. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Now I, I can, uh, don't have to worry about going to travel and get my quad anymore. Um, beautiful. I love it. Great job, dude. Technology. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Technology is great. 
All right, YouTube family, I appreciate you guys checking this out and, yeah. and getting the gremlin and turtle mode. I appreciate yeah. you, Ian, soldering everything. No problem. Um, if you guys do this, we want to know about it. So definitely put a comment in the uh, down below mm -hmm. and uh, tell us if you tried it, if it worked, if you were successful. Yeah. Or even if you have a better way to do it or you guys have gremlin tricks, you could try that or the, go to the forums and uh, let everybody know. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate it. Thanks for checking this out, Ian. Thanks, man. You can uh, you can go fly your little project you got going. <laughs> thanks, man. Yep. Once again, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Um, and don't forget to subscribe. You know, hit that notification bell. We do four, sometimes even five episodes a week. So you definitely want to make sure you're notified when we go ahead and put that video up so you guys can stay up to date on all the latest and greatest flight test action. All right, guys. Thanks. How should I put my hand? My hand? <laughs> it's, 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 it's an awkward. What do I, uh, what do, I do with my uh, uh, hands? So. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Matt. <laughs> Wait, you're Ian, dude. Do you want me to introduce him? <laughs> Just like.